Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about machine translation with deep learning and we are going to use sequence to sequence with the attention mechanism. So here is the example, we are going to translate English to the Korean and here is the example sentence I love you and the I love you in Korean is 난널 사랑해 and I use the English term here because there are many users who don't know about the Korean language so I just uh, pronunciation with English here 난널 사랑해 so what is the best way for translation here? You may think about the word-to-word -word translation. So I becomes none, love becomes 사랑해, you becomes null, I love you, eventually becomes none, 사랑해, null here. But this is not perfect because if you see the answer here, the answer is none, null, 사랑해, while our prediction is none, 사랑해, null. So word order has been changed here. That's why, because the English and Korean has different word order. So normally English is SVO language, while the Korean is SOB language here, as you can see. And the second issue is the word-to-word -word translation is uh, the output always have the same word count with input, while it should not. For example, in English, the how are you in Korean is 잘 지내. And as you can see here, the English word count is three words while we expect the Korean language in two words only. And the word-to-word -word translation always have the same input, uh, same word count uh, as input. So this approach is not perfect for the, the machine translation. So, okay, how about the sequence of word translation? Uh, you may be familiar with the RNN. Let's use the RNN here. So we have the input I here. Then we have the second RNN cell taking the, the first RNN cell's state and the new input love here. And then we take the U in the sec, uh, next RNN cell. So eventually the last state uh, will have the contextual meaning of this I love you. And we call it context vector. And from the context vector, we can start the next RNN cells here. The next RNN cells will take the context vector as a last state and uh, take the new input, which is just start because we have not translated yet. Uh, this start sign is just the sign that we are now starting the translation. And it outputs none here. And the next RNN cell will take this uh, prediction as input and also take the, the state from the last RNN cell and eventually uh, outputting null here. And same thing goes to here and eventually we have the 사랑해 until we have the end signal here. Once this one gets end signal, then the, it finishes the translation and output uh, between the start and end here. So the output will be 난널 사랑해. And this perfectly translated uh, English to the Korean and we call it encoder decoder architecture or just call it sequence to sequence model. So from the encoder part, encoder reads and encodes a source sentence into a fixed length vector. This is very important. This context vector is a fixed length vector. And there is a decoder uh, output a translation from the encoded vector. Encoded vector is nothing but the context vector here. Uh, successful by jointly trained to maximize the probability of a correct a translation given a source sentence. But there is a potential issue. The potential issue is at the context vector. As I said, it is the fixed size vector. So what if your input is pretty long and your fixed size vector is not pretty large enough? Then when you are decoding, when you are translating, you don't have enough information to translate and eventually the translation is not going to be the perfect. So how can we improve this? Uh, that's the topic of this video as well. Well, rather than using fixed context vector, we can use the encoders each state with the current state to generate a dynamic context vector. Then we can have the enough information for each context vector from each state and then we can translate better than the traditional the sequence to sequence model. Uh, there are mostly two benefits here. First benefit is the encode info into a sequence of vectors, not in a single context vector. Second benefit is choose a subset of these vectors adaptively while decoding the translation. Uh, you may not understand it right away, but let's take an example here. 
So here is a just simple RNA cell. The encoder part is the very same with uh, the traditional sequence to sequence model. We get the I love you. And we had each state, H1, H2, H3 here. Uh, importantly, the traditional the sequence to sequence model doesn't use this each state value. But now we are going to use this each state value, H1, H2, H3, and the final output was the H3 here. Since the final output was H3, the next fully connected layer will take this H3 as an input. Also, we will use every uh, encoder's RNA cell's state value here. So you can see the fully connected layer has H1, H2, H3. And also we have the H3 again because this was the previous stage's uh, state value. From here, we get uh, three scores, S1, S2, S3 because we had a three stage value here. And we do the softmax on it. That means the output of the softmax will have the probability value. And uh, I just hard coded the number here, uh, 0.9 for the I, 0 0.0 for the love, 0.U for the one. We call it attention weight. Uh, that means uh, we want to attention, focus on I. 90% and uh, you 10% and 0% for love here. Then we eventually get the contextualized vector. Contextualized vector 1 here is just h1 times 0 0.9 plus h2 times 0 plus h3 uh, plus uh, h3 uh, times 0 0.1 here. This is the contextualized vector. So we are highlighting i in this contextualized vector and this contextualized vector is coming to the decoder's uh, input. Also, this is decoder's uh, starting time, so we give the start signal here. And this RNA cell outputting none here, and also outputting uh, current state uh, value here. This current state value I just uh, sh showed here, decoder hidden state one here. So let's go to the next step. The next step, this decoder's hidden state is coming to the fully connected net network. Also, we are again using H1, H2, H3. You see the difference here? So lastly, we just use H3 for the, the second fully connected net layer in the fully connected layer. But this time, we use the DH1 in the sec uh, this fully connected network because this is uh, the previous state from the decoder. But we keep the H1, H2, H3 because we still want to use this hidden state from the encoder. And we get the softmax value here. Now I also uh, hard coded this attention weight and uh, 0.1 for the I, 0 0.0 for the love, and a 0.9 for the U. And this second uh, contextualized vector will be uh, H1 times 0.1 plus H2 times 0 plus H3 times 0.9. Eventually, it means that we want to highlight U this time and I 10% and 0% for the love here. This comes to the uh, decoder second RNA cell and also the input will be the previous output of the decoder, which is none. After doing that, the second RNA cell will output null here and also uh, output the state, which is the DH2. And same logic now, you can see here, the DH2 is coming to the fully cutting network when we again to use the H1, H2, H3 because we want to have the attention weight here. After the softmax, as you can see, after the softmax, the attention weight for the love is now 95%, and the I has 3%, and the U has 2% only. So context vector 3 will focus on love a lot. And this CV3 is coming to the decoder's RNA cell with uh, the output from the previous uh, decoder RNA cell. And eventually it will output 사랑해 here. And you will see the end. So the output of the decoder is now going to be 난널 사랑해. You got it, right? So this is how the sequence to sequence model with attention mechanism. So in this research paper I'm referring, you can see the result here. So RNA search is uh, the sequence sequence model with attention, and the RNA encode is something like the traditional uh, sequence sequence model. And the number like uh, RNA search 50 means RNA search uh, the RNA this uh, encoder decoder with attention trained with maximum 50 word count 
or the 30 means trend with a maximum 30 word account here. As you can see here, the sequence, sequence model with attention mechanism is better than the traditional the sequence to sequence model. No matter what the word sound, word, uh, word count is less or many, uh, the sequence, sequence with attention mechanism uh, has higher performance. As you can see here. Here's bonus track. Um, what is the teacher first thing? I have not talked about the teacher first thing in previous slide, but this has been used many sequence to sequence with attention model now, and also Google Colab I refer also used the teacher first thing. The reason why the, we are using the teacher first thing in the sequence to sequence model, we have an example here. What if the decoder, decoder RNN cell output something wrong value? Then this wrong value will propagate the next RNN cell's output and that will eventually have wrong predictions again and again and again, right? So this wrong prediction affects the next word prediction. That's the issue when you don't use the teacher forcing, your training will be not effective and very slow. So instead of using the output of the RNA cell, we just give the input with the real answer. That's the teacher forcing. So target word, which is the ground truth, passed as the next input to the decoder, so it faster and stable model train. Okay, so here are my references. I reference the the reference is like a neural machine learning translation by joint joint learning to align and translate. Uh, if you see this research paper, which will be great to understand this sequence sequence model with attention mechanism. Also, if you are interested in the code, uh, there is a collab here. You go this collab and uh, take a look and have a practice there. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the next video.